To be white in so many ways is to be raised, to be functionally illiterate on the topic of race. I am white, uh, and part of being white is that I was not raised to see myself in racial terms. I mean, I understood that somebody had race, but not really me. But to be white is to see oneself outside of race, to see oneself as a unique, special individual, exempt from the forces of socialization. I'll never forget a moment of standing beside a black man leading a workshop on race and a white woman said to him, I don't see color. He said, well then how are you going to see racism? Because I am black. I do think you know that and I have a different experience than you do and you're not going to be able to understand that and you're not going to be able to support the parts of that experience that are really painful and problematic if you refuse to acknowledge my reality. I don't see color is really a way of saying I refuse to acknowledge your reality. What's important about that narrative is it reveals what the person thinks racism is. So if the person is using proximity, fondness across race as evidence of a lack of racism, in order for that to be good evidence, a racist must not be able to do that. So that rests on an understanding that a racist cannot tolerate proximity to people of color. And I'm hoping that we can see that's pretty absurd because trust me, even avowed racists can tolerate being around people of color and often are. You cannot talk about any other issue without talking about how race informs that issue. And when someone says it's about class, that tends to function as a way to get race off the table. First of all, we're already divided by race. Uh, and focusing on race is, is not what did it. I would say not focusing on race, refusing to grapple with how race shapes virtually everything is what keeps us divided. And that is a very white narrative. All of those narratives function to get race off the table, close the exploration, exempt the person from any further engagement, and protect the racial hierarchy and the white position with it, which is an unequal hierarchy. The challenge I want to offer my fellow white people is changing the question from if to how. So dominant culture asks if I'm racist, and I want to change that question to how have I been shaped by the forces of racism? How is racism manifesting in my life? Because it circulates 24-7, 365. None of us can be and none of us were exempt from its forces. And this is where individualism can come in. I have a particular story, but that story didn't exempt me. And so I can ask myself, how did all the things I see as unique about me set me up into the overall racist structure because it did. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.